Okay, back in, back properly. No more just running around and doing whatever. Just exploration of the desert. No. Exactly, we're assembling Benny. We're gonna do the event. Oh, fuck. We're gonna do the event. And then we're gonna do Kaveh's Hangout. Let's go. Oh my god, Lana, you got Skara? Sick! Skara's so good. Oh my god, Skara's so good. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, so proud of you. Actually. The Scar is so fun to play around. So, um I will actually explain you pity. Um I uh, Skara is so cute. I, I love that when you play as Skara and it starts raining, he says, You wanna use my hat as an umbrella? The audacity to even ask that <laughs> <laughs> and I assume the travel writer pushes under his umbrella. I love Skara. Um, to explain you pity, okay? Details. So, a little lesson for those who don't know. Uh, uh what pity? Uh, so. Within 90 pulls, within 90 pulls, you are guaranteed to receive a 5-star character. Okay? Within 90 pulls, you're guaranteed to receive a 5-star five five character. Uh, mm. So we just... So within the 90, you're guaranteed to do that. Uh, the more, the closer to this number you are, the higher the chance it will actually be a 5-star character. The, the chance just increases due to the simple fact of within those 90, there needs to be at least one. So in between one 5-star uh, and another 5-star, there can be maximum of 90 wishes. Once you get that 5-star, that the PT resets and you start at 0 again. So, PD0 is the lowest you can have, because it's the most amount of possible chances until you get an, a 5 star character. The, ha the, more, the more wishes you did, the more chances you used, the bigger the chance the next one will be a 5 star character. Through trial and error, players in the game figured out that uh, 5 star character, uh, that 5 star pulls are most probable on soft pity being around 75 wishes soft pity is around 75 wishes um, anything above 40 we're starting to call high pity um, within 70 wishes we're calling that soft pity you're nearly guaranteed to get uh, a 5 star in like 75th 77th wish um, most of the time you will very, 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 very rarely you will get not to 90. Um, and that's basically what we call pity. Pity is your number of wishes you did since your last 5 star. So here, my pity right now is 2. My pity right now is 2. I have a very, very low chance of getting a 5 star within next wishes. Um, on permanent banner... My pity right now is uh, 15. It's 15. That's what pity is. So the, f so the further you are from a fi last 5 star character, the higher your pity, the closer it means you are to the next 5 star character. Do you know how the guarantee works? Uh, do, do, do you know how the guarantee system works? Guarantee system is that on the 
on these two specifically, right? The character event wishes. When you're getting a five star, it's a 50-50 chance between getting the character that's on banner, the limited time five star character, or one of these, uh, one of these, okay? It's either this one or one of these. That's 50-50 chance, it's a coin flip, okay? Thing is, if you lose the 50-50, if you lose uh, this 50-50 and not get, in this situation, Kokomi, but you get Dia instead, your next five star on the character banner is guaranteed to be the character from the banner. So if I did a wish 10 right now and I got uh, uh, Tainari, the next five star character I'm get five star pull I'm getting on the on character event banner is the character on that banner. That's it. So yeah, pity is amount of uh, of pulls until absolutely guaranteed pitied a uh, five star character because that, that's what it's pity. The game is pitying you, uh, and to guarantee is failing to get to win the 50-50 chance and getting uh, getting a guaranteed character. Oh, this little shit is up there. This little shit has to be up here. There is no chances anywhere else. Yeah. Hey, if you're too late to do stuff in Genshin, that's what I'm here for. I do them for you so you don't have to. <laughs> By the waterfall. Okay. So it's that. Oi! You... There is three kinds of boars, I just realized that. Holy shit. Where is the last one? Oh, by the tree, okay. <laughs> you wanna make a new account? I know what you mean. You. My friend was saying the same thing. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Oh, crystal flies. I didn't know there are crystal flies here. What the? Wait, there are cryo crystal flies here? Okay, where's the next one? Oh. Okay. That's fine. Visibility is excellent. Uh, I mean we European server. Mount. We can do a full recon of enemy activity in the area. I'm I'm in Europe. I'm on European server. Kind of the best one for me. Oh my god, it's so high. Oi. Finch. Hey, that's me. Hey. Who told you you can look at me from the... But I look damn good from that distance. I look good from every distance. Wee. Uh. Oh, 
I'm over there. Still looking mighty fine. Yeah, you're in Asian servers, aren't you, hey? Yeah, U European server is for me. That that's where I live. That's a lot of rock. Okay. 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 Oh, so much. Sixteen wishes saved. Perfect. So, it is time. I'm actually curious. Oh, I wanna check it. Okay, 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 okay. I, I wanna check it. I will... I will change him to someone else. Let it be sign up. Let it be sign up. It's time to do... It's time to do Kave. So we went through that ending. This one was just so cute. So cute. Kave reconnecting with how his mum used to live and spending time with his friends. That's sweet. We'll go from here. Let's go. I can! Oh my god, I can't read his mind. Yes! I can read Kaveh's mind in his uh, in his hangout. Are you alright, buddy? Oh, hey. I wasn't expecting to run into you here. Well, what did you expect? While we're on that, what are you doing here at the tavern? Don't listen to anyone who says that drinking is an elegant pastime. It's no good for your health. Yeah, it's not. I agree with you, Kavai. I saw we got arguing with someone outside. You saw all that, did you? Oh, I thought I was in the clear. I made sure to double check that nobody I knew was around. Uh, anyway, thanks for looking out for me. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm used to it by now. Stress is just an inescapable part of being a working adult. Boss, I'll have a glass of wine. Same as last time. Do you want something too? I'll put it on my tab. I'll have a glass of juice. Apple glass juice, juice, please. Right up. I'll have a gamer sub. I'm not sponsored by gamer sub. I just really think it's good. <laughs> but if you could add this one to the list as well, I'd really appreciate it. Arguing with a client is not a good look for me. If word gets out, no, bro. Fucking fight with them. With fight for what's yours. I know. What was he even going on about? All those ridiculous demands of his? He's just a blabbering fool trying to act like a know it all. Kava had a one glass of wine, dude. <laughs> Another glass, please, boss. I'm not leaving today till someone has to carry me out. You got it, sir. Uh, I gotta say, though, it almost feels like you're saying that every other day. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going out until someone has to carry me out. Yep. Give me a second, I, I need to get my story straight. Ah, the architectural style. Gone through six whole drafts trying to accommodate the client's preferences. The yeah, because he would just throw the thing at him. This just means that I've grown numb to it. I've worked on so many projects since graduation, and none of them have been approved at the first pass. I would spend a lot of time altering my designs, and by the time the clients were finally satisfied, all my passion and enthusiasm would be gone. 
It feels like I'm straying further and further from my artistic vision with every change I have to make. I suppose, though, that just sticking to your guns and completely disregarding other people's feedback would also not be a good thing. All of this makes for a real paradox, one that particularly crops up in my work, too. In the end, what is the true meaning of art? Should I see it as a divine gift of inspiration from the Oh gods, my god. Or an they of the light of my own wisdom. At my work. Um how are you already spouting nonsense uh, after just one glass? Your tolerance is usually much better than that. I at my work, we have an office outside of the main building, like parking office. And the other day, one of the guys from the parking the door slipped out of his hand because the wind blew a little too hard and it hit the wall. It broke one of the hinges. <sighs> they just broke out the door. <laughs> they just broke out the door from the hinges. <laughs> just, it just ripped out. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. There is no door. <laughs> oh my god. They're, they ripped out the door from the hinges. Oh no. Oh no. They ripped the door out the hinges. No. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that that's not going to get fixed for a month. friend who in Sumeru understands art better than you anyway I don't know about art but I do know that I'm interested in business and some patrons are waiting to be served so you'll have to excuse me for now just holler if you need anything you can't see the How penis angel emoji oh no oh uh, art is something that resonates with the masses yes shouldn't be self-indulgent entertainment saved for the no 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 for someone cave no they don't like how it looks then no matter how brilliant it may appear to me they won't be happy with it no cave listen art isn't something that's supposed to appeal to the masses art is something that's supposed to appeal to you you're supposed to be the first person that's in love with the piece of art you created because if you haven't, if you don't like what you've made, you will not make a good thing. You have to like what you've made. You have to consider this thing art yourself to look at it and be like, yup, I made this. I'm proud of this. It, it's not just supposed to be something that it's great for everyone. No, because once it's great to you, once you love what you've made, people that think similarly, people, that, people will much easier find it great too. Just work up with that. And just work with that. Also. Penis emoji! Woo! Woo! It's the door. That's the door. <laughs> it's the door. <laughs> <laughs> they ripped it out. They ripped it the fuck out. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> the problem is that it can be very difficult to get validated by others. I could compromise my personal standards to accommodate my clients, but often that just means creating a final product that I would struggle to look at. Exactly. Exactly, Kavai. Kavai still looks dejected. Yeah. Maybe I should play it safe and just make a simple suggestion. I'll help you convince the client to come to your side. Ah, thanks for offering, but you've seen how he is. He 
He's not going to listen to anything I say. He understands nothing about my design. And all the suggestions he made were as if he just wanted to mock me. I don't think he was just intentionally trying okay. to be difficult. It is possible that I was just jaded by my frustration. Well, given I'm already on my sixth draft, I can probably push myself to make a seventh. <laughs> my god, boy. Talk with him. I know where we'd be able to find the guy. There's no time to waste. The wine can wait until another time. I'll go take care of the bills. Ah, oh, such a good guy. He didn't even throw it at me. He's struggling for money and did, didn't throw the bill at me. Oh, and I'm gonna brag a little bit right now. The other day, my order of manga came in. I finally have the full One Punch Man manga series. Up to date. I mean, it's not finished. Cheap Port Ormos. This one. So I have all the volumes from 1 till 24 of One Punch Man. I have uh, all the volumes of 1 to 34 or of uh, My Hero Academia. I have all volumes of uh, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, Quintessential Quintuplets, Bakuman, uh, Konosuba, and I nearly have all the volumes of Devil is a part-timer, as well as Kami Can't Communicate. And most volumes of Yu-Gi-Oh! spin-off series. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! That's a thing you can know about me. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Kave, what are you doing here? I... I've changed my mind. Uh, I was overreacting earlier. Can we try discussing the project some more? My apologies as well. Now that I think about it, some of my requests were indeed a bit unreasonable. If I choose you to create the design for my project, I should have a bit more faith in your vision. You see, but now we can figure it out. Thank you for understanding. Mutual trust is the basis for good communication. Now that we've got that out of the way, I think we can have a more productive conversation. To be perfectly honest, your commission request has been the most peculiar one I've ever received. Even now, I still know nothing about the building's intended purpose. All I know is that you want to build something in the desert for public use. I am aware that overly specific requests will restrain the architect's artistic freedom. However, knowing nothing about the intended purpose of the building also means I have no idea if I'm on the right track. You, you've, you've got a point. draft proposals for you to choose from. And you've rejected every single one. If we don't get on the same page, it could be a decade before we can finally break ground on this project. Yes, I've given this some thought already. I think we can go with the general direction of the latest proposal that you just showed me. Okay. It's just okay, we're working that. Hmm? Just what? Uh, putting the uh, building design aside, <laughs> can we get some... Less expensive materials for the floor tiles. Yeah, I know someone in the business, and the, the red bricks he sells can go for pretty cheap. The timber here as well. Uh, we should be able to find some substitutes. Ah, uh, please give me a moment. My head's starting to hurt again. Just please hold on for a second. <clears throat> so, let me get this straight. You want to reduce the cost of the project, right? But if we implement your suggestions, then I'm afraid we have to scrap the entire design. Architectural design cannot be neatly split into discrete parts. Any change to one part of the design will affect the quality of the whole thing. I decided to utilize high-end timber for this section because the weight-bearing structure requires the supporting materials to be durable and strong. Fair so point. With the tiles. Switch them out and the entire mural will have to be redesigned. More importantly, if we make such a change, both its practical functionality and aesthetic value will take a great hit. Okay. If all you need is a building with a roof that can keep people dry in the rain. You shouldn't have commissioned me. Many architects would be able to build you one of those while charging far less in commission fees. Actually, I... Please tell me. Are you absolutely sure that there's no room for any changes in this draft of the design? 
I think the most important thing for me is to understand what you would actually like to get. If you could tell me more about your vision, I might be able to work with the design some more. You are the client, after all. You should have the final say on how the project turns out. I want to build something unique. <laughs> something quiet and warm inside. A refuge that can block out the world outside. Aww. I want all who enter this building to be able to temporarily forget everything that's going on outside of the building and just focus on their task at hand. Hmm. That's a bit more information than last time, but it's still extremely vague. It is vague. It but way, it is. Every rich person hmm. who wants to build a mansion for themselves would request something like this. We've gone through many proposals, and this draft is already the cheapest one. Cutting costs by substituting building materials will not only detract from the overall effect of the building, it also won't save you much more in the grand scheme of things. Hmm. Thank you for giving it so much thought. <laughs> Please, give me some more time to mull over the budget. I'll get back to you once I've figured out a solution. I still have a few business meetings that I must attend, so... I'm afraid I'll have to leave for now. You can just leave the proposal as is. I'll get in touch once I've given it some more thought. Jesus, if you... Why did you stay like that? Like, till 11 and... Christ! Go to bed! Go to bed! Oh my god! Let's go sleep! Also have a similar feeling. Should we follow him? Uh, is that really okay? I mean, what he does now is none of our business. He does seem really suspicious, though. He dresses like a rich person, but when you talk to him, he hardly sounds the part. That's actually pretty common. Not all rich people are spendthrifts. Many are just, as if not more, stingy than him. The more mora some people have, the more they love interfering with people's lives. If you're still sleepy, you're not okay. Reminding you to pay back your debts. We're hinting every other day that it's time for you to pay rent. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure this person really wants to work on this project with me. Putting his vague requests aside, he's still finding excuses to procrastinate even when we've decided on a plan. Who knows how long construction will take if he keeps delaying things like this. We should find him again and get some clearer answers. The sooner we can break ground on this, the better. I like that Kave just casually mentioned that Althaeum pushes him, like, like quietly nudging him into, hey, 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 stop paying rent. <laughs> You can miss my stream sometimes, don't <laughs> sleep is more important. Hey, look! Isn't that Badawi? It sure looks like him. He's dressed completely different now. He's dressed like a mercenary. Didn't I tell you before? I'm not looking for more workers. Plus, aren't you a bit old for physical labor? If something happens to you, I won't be able to pay for it. Oh, Oh, you won't have to worry about that. I grew up as an Aramite mercenary and worked in the desert my entire life. My body's still in great shape. I don't have I can sit a six pack. But I still have my muscle. If you need someone to unload goods or drive away sumter beasts, I'm your man. You used to be an Aramite mercenary? <laughs> I know there are a lot of bad apples in our ranks, but most are just trying to make a living. We're not that greedy by nature, and we'll do our best when given a job. That's understandable. Hmm. Let me think. I'm sorry, but I still can't take you in. I don't have any open positions right now, and don't have the mora for anything more. How about this? Why don't you try your luck somewhere else? Jesus. Okay, okay. Dude, what's up? You used up? to be a member of the Aramites? Huh. 
From the way he was dressed, I would have thought he was a merchant from the rainforest. Let's ask him about it. And he's trying to build something nice in the desert, huh? I still need some more Mora. Oh. We meet again. Oh. Why are you guys here? That's what we wanted to ask you. Who are you? Why did you dress up like a merchant to talk to me about our project? Uh, uh. There's no need for us to continue this project if you still want to keep hiding things from us. I don't work with individuals I can't trust. Believe me, I didn't have any bad intentions. It's just... It's just what? All right. There's no point hiding anything anymore. The building I'm trying to commission you for is not really a personal residence for me. But rather a library for children living in the desert. Bro, just say that. A library? Funded entirely by yourself. Shouldn't this be the responsibility of the academia? I've heard that the academia will be looking to prioritize the desert with the allocation of educational resources and materials. Sent over a large shipment of regular goods just last month. You're right. And I was aware of these happenings as well. I just figured... Okay. What I want to do is a separate effort from what's already being done by the Academia. He's trying to do the something good for the kids. Vast. Even if the Academia spends a lot of effort trying to disseminate knowledge in those parts, it might still take decades, if not centuries, to reduce the educational gap that already exists between the two regions. And what's more, I don't know if the Academia would ever reverse its stance in the future. Hmm. All I know is that as a desert dweller, we should not wait passively for good things to happen to us. If we only did that, we'd never be able to stand up and hold our heads high. I don't have much you know, longer fair left enough. on this world. So I just want to use whatever time I have to contribute something to my homeland. Jesus, Lana. <laughs> it's good I don't have a camera because... <laughs> oh. Don't say things like that. You're making me blush. <laughs> Come on. I didn't want you to know that I came from the desert. I've lived in the desert my entire life, and there wasn't anyone here that I could trust. I figured I needed as much safety as I could get. To the point that you even disguised your identity? That's certainly taking playing it safe to the next level. Hold on. Don't tell me you've also been scammed before. When I first came to Sumeru City, I brought a lot of Mora, hoping to find an architect that I could work with. Okay. Someone agreed to take on the project, and even took a sum of Mora from me, but oh. then disappeared without a trace. Oh, poor by the way. I heard that there are a lot of untrustworthy people in this business. Some would run as soon as they've been paid, while others would deliberately use expensive materials and take a cut of the construction funding. I spent a while collecting information in the city and eventually learned that you're the most famous architect in all of Sumeru. I figured that you wouldn't need to make Mora by scamming people, so I decided to reach out to you. By the way, how did you know I was scammed? I don't think I've ever mentioned that to anybody. Just a hunch. A while ago, I accepted an offer to work on a project in the desert was also scammed out of a large sum of Mora. Oh. I ran into someone who was living in a pretty run-down house. I noticed a load-bearing wall on the verge of collapse and suggested that I build a new house for him. He said that he had no way to pay for it, so I loaned him some of my own Mora and told him to get some stone and timber from the local vendors. Soon after that, I found out that he had gone gambling with all the money and lost everything, down to the last coin. Jeez. After that, he even borrowed Mora from me twice more, using a different excuse each time. I didn't even suspect him of any wrongdoing until he hired a group of mercenaries and tried to ambush me in his own house. Jesus! According to him, 
I looked like an easy target because I was an academia scholar who didn't have any family or friends in the desert. <laughs> what kind of person would just look at someone else and think, this guy looks like an easy target? Those kinds of things do happen every once in a while, yes. Folks like him are the exact reason why us desert dwellers' reputation have gone down the drain. I must apologize to you Ka on their behalf. Kaveh's backstory is just so... So sad and dramatic. Like, think about it. His dad died when Kave was like... Six. Because Kave told him like, Oh, I would want to wear this crown for winning the tournament between Darshans. So his dad joined the tournament and died in the middle of it. After that, his mom became super depressed. Raised him on her own. Did a great job. But as soon as Kave was old enough to just kind of be left on his own, she remarried and dipped to Fontaine. Leaving him with no relatives around or someone to turn to. He got scammed like that in the desert out of all his uh, a lot of his money. He he lost a ton of money building a palace for uh, some rich guy because he just put too much of his own money into the project. So now he's just broke, living without Hayham, can't move out simply and only because he's too good of a guy to not help people. Bro, I feel Kave so hard. It's all right. You were also scammed by someone from Kasharwar after all. I should apologize to you on their behalf. Ultimately, neither of our experiences had anything to do with the desert or the rainforest. People who are new to an area are always easy targets for criminals. Pe uh, people are bad people are yeah, everywhere. You'll find both good and bad people everywhere. I can't understand the logic of those who like to take advantage of others, but I have to accept their existence as a fact of life. Anyway, I digress. Let's return to the topic at hand. Did you keep rejecting my designs because you thought I was deliberately using expensive materials to take a cut as a middleman? That's what I was afraid of initially, yes. I eventually understood that you weren't out to cheat me. But unfortunately, I still don't have Your hand hurts. <laughs> Your hand hurt. hurts. So he's just. And know that we should be able to make it it's just a funny thought. <laughs> Leave However, it be. After our conversations, I can see that you're passionate about your design. And I'm quite fond of the proposal as well. So, I decided to try and see. If, if you're I a tiny person with a too big phone, then I would expect that. I've been looking for work every day. And in another month, I should be able to cobble together enough Mora to meet the budget. By cobble together, you mean you're going to spend your entire life savings on this project? But then, what will you do if something unexpected comes up? And you find yourself stuck with no emergency fund? To be honest, I haven't really thought about that. I mean, when you've lived to be my age and something happens, you can't really call it unexpected anymore. Hmm. All I want is to build this library before I leave this world. So that the children of the future would have some books to read. And the desert dwellers would be able to learn their letters and pick up some practical knowledge. That's such a nice thing of him to try to do. Really, really admirable. If, if I was rich, and we're talking like filthy rich right we're talking like uh, bill gates uh, jeff bezos uh, elon musk rich what i would do <laughs> what i would do is i would buy out a huge piece of land in some big city okay it, it's some nice big city i would buy out a huge piece of land and build a park. Uh, I will build a park there. I would make it the greatest park, just like a natural park, that that can be. It would have a lot of open plains that you could just play with ball, or play ball with the family, run around, and not worry about hitting a tree. Where you could spread to, uh, spread to freaking 
uh, a towel or like f f what you call it um missing the word like for a picnic like you could spread out a picnic there it would be a lovely area. There would be a, a little part, a pond or two, with maybe a lake going in between them. Uh, there would be tons of different trees. Uh, there would be different facilities for, uh, uh, for uh, like greenhouses, uh, for uh, a, a library, uh, our areas for studying. Er th there will be spaces to organize events. It, it would be a wonderful, huge, open space area park with couple buildings here and there, with maybe like a small football field and small basketball field here and there. Uh, maybe a skate park somewhere. Uh, these ponds where you could swim around in because the water would be properly kept clean, but also kept in a standard where fish can naturally live there. Um, th and th there, there would be those buildings, those facilities that where people that keep the park like in good condition would live not live would work um m maybe even a small museum of uh, like uh, a local art where local artists could uh, put their works in for small fees uh, and uh, those works could be bought and sold through that uh, through that small museum um and or if a particularly uh, a particular piece of art would be liked by curators of that small museum they could buy it and just hang it there permanently things like that it would just imagine central park in new york city but made really 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 much nicer and and there would be a ton of like uh exo not exotic uh endangered types of plants uh, different trees different bushes different flowers uh i would specifically put like flowers uh like flowers and trees that are protected by law in that country so that the government itself would be forced into po taking care of those as well the government would be forced into taking part in running the this park uh, so that uh, these endangered trees these endangered pl plants would be properly taken care of I would make the best park in the world. There would be information around the park about these different plants and things you can find in it. The flora, like what are the names, how you can recognize them, uh, where are they from, uh, how they can be grown and uh, cultivated and things like that. And I would make absolute sure that everyone knows I've made it. I would make such, a, such an effort into making sure that people knew it was me who made it. I would be there every day. I would be strolling around the park every day. There would be in different spots uh, with like this, uh, with, with like this description of what this place is and what you can find. There. there would, there would be my picture there as well, like founder of this park, the great creator behind it. Uh, th 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 there would just be information easily found to know I've made it and how amazing I've made it. And then, like after like six, seven years of me creating this park and making sure everyone knows I did it, I would just stop showing up. I would just stop showing up. People would stop seeing me there. Like I would never show my face there again. I would just disappear from public view. And within like six months of my disappearance, I would put, I would put a, a, like a gravestone in the park, in a spot I would particularly very often be hanging out in. I would put a gravestone there with nothing but my name, uh, m m my name on it. Okay, there will be just my name on it, no birth date, no uh, date of birth, date of death, nothing. Just my name on a gravestone in the park, in a spot I used to hang out in often. And after another like half a year, when people would get used to that gravestone being there, when they would figure out after the six months, like, oh, what the fuck is a gravestone doing here? Uh, and after those next six months, so overall a year from my disappearance, they would get used to that gravestone being there. I would start showing up once in a while next to the gravestone and I would just stand there for a while. No flowers, no nothing. I would just stand there 
and whenever someone would come up to me and be like uh, who who's who's here who's lying here like that that's a strange place for a gravestone to be in, like in a park and i'll be like like who, who who's who's lying here who who's the person here and i'll just be like no one special just someone who really liked the park and i would walk away towards a gate entrance to the park where there would be a photo of me by the entrance <laughs> <laughs> there would be just a photo of me by the entrance there. So I would pretend I'm dead and I'm hunting the puck. <laughs> <laughs> I would pretend I'm dead hunting the area. <laughs> that's what I would do. That that's what I would do. <sighs> yep. A while ago. <laughs> that's my plan. <laughs> decided to recruit a number of exceptional children from the desert. Oh. Of course, this is welcomed news. But as someone who spent their entire life in the desert, I still have a few concerns. I know the desert life and can predict what the problems will be. Many children from the desert have had neither the interest nor the proper environment to learn. So even if the academia would take them in, once they enter the halls, they might find themselves surrounded by other children who look and act very differently from them. And as a result, they might become socially isolated. They could. Yes, I can imagine that. Also, regarding the, regarding death. I'm... Once I write a will, right? Once I write a will, I'm gonna write down in it that... There is a sum of money put aside in my account that I want to be spent on hiring an actor that will that will arrive at my funeral dressed in all black. I want my funeral to be during d during a sun like a sunny day, and I want no one to be dressed in black. I want everyone on my funeral to be dressed in like colors because I don't like people wearing just black I love when people wear colors I, I love pastels and I don't want my funeral to be crying over my death I want it to be a celebration of my life so I want this one actor to show up dressed completely in black during day with a black umbrella not speak to anyone and hang like enough of a distance from the funeral happening to not be directly next to people but close enough to be somewhat visible by them but not exactly like they, that they can see their, his, their, their face so I just want this one like men in black agent to show up on my funeral not speak to anyone have a black umbrella and a black suit in the middle of a fucking day during like d during spring and speak to no one so that everyone that show up to my funeral just sees this person and is questioning if i had a second life that nobody knew about <laughs> I just want people to question <laughs> how the, how did I actually die <laughs> and what kind of life I was leading that nobody knew who this person in black is. <laughs> I want this to happen. <laughs> I actually have like a savings account that will have enough money for that. <laughs> I actually have a savings account that will, would be able to pay for that. 
And having that savings account also gives me life insurance, so in case I die, there is money to have have me have a funeral. <laughs> So if I die, that that insurance is gonna pay for my funeral, and money in that savings account is gonna pay for the actor to <laughs> to sh to arrive at the funeral. <laughs> I'm already prepared. <laughs> my father passed away at an early age. Even though I had a good number of friends during my years at the academia, for some time I still sensed many critical looks in my direction. I'm sure a child coming all the way from the desert will have an even harder time. But let's bring this back to the building itself. I think you said that you want this go. building to be go, Lana. And warm, with its doors serving as a Why are you sad? To block out the sound and fury outside. Wh and where are you sound? To focus on the sad. In their hands. Uh, I, I, it, it makes me worry to hear you're sad. Are you sad you have to go, or are you uh, you have to go because you're sad? Fair enough, okay. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it, it's because you want to talk more. Okay, F fair enough. That makes me less worried. But if you have to go, you have to go. Go, relax, and just... Th that's it. Go. Go. <laughs> if you have to go, go. Do what you have to do. And I hope I see you tomorrow again. Building it according to the current plan will be quite costly. Even if I don't charge you any commission fees, I don't think we'd be able to keep it under your budget. Mm. Any ideas on what we can do? Mm. Sponsor the project? You mean convince wealthy merchants to join our cause? And yeah. And their money together to build the library? Yeah. That does make sense. Library is a big project. It's going to <laughs> Thank be you, Lana. Just a single person's more. Big love. What do you think? If we can find others to sponsor the project, we could potentially increase the size of the building two or threefold. <laughs> it's all fine with me, but where do you think we'll be able to find these sponsors? <laughs> well, you're right. If I really think about it, I'm not too familiar with many big name merchants. We can ask Dory. Her? Hard pass. With her shrewd and greedy personality, she would never put Mora into something like this. How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> now there's an idea. She probably won't say no if all she'll need to do is to make some introductions instead of spending Mora. Let's go and pay her a visit. Let's go talk to Jesus Christ, Dory. Where the fuck you are? Jesus Christ, Dory. You you said ha. What what ha? Go go sleep, goddammit. Okay, alright. Hey. <laughs> Dory's backstory is also sad, isn't it? Dor Dory's backstory is also sad. Good. Go relax. Change. Yes. You are literally living in an objet d'art, and yet your mind is still fixated on nothing but Mora. What is the point of wealth anyway? Is your happiness entirely dependent on your hoard of cold, emotionless Mora? Yes. That's exactly right. Mora is extremely valuable. You see, if you 
to keep your mind on it, your mora may just find its way to somebody else's pockets. And if you ask me, this place is still way too empty. Just give me some time and I'll fill it to the brim with lots and lots of mora. <sighs> You're hopeless. Let's go back to why we're here. So, Good night, Lana. We would like to ask for your help in introducing us to some merchants. Merchants? Why? Is there some kind of business opportunity? Well... Oh, I see. So you're just looking for someone to help you put the bell. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't be interested in something like this. Still, you wouldn't refuse just making some introductions for us, would you? Sure, I can connect you with some folks. I will get some sleep later myself, don't worry. A fee? You mean just for introductions? Of course! Making introductions means using my connections and putting my reputation on the line. Why wouldn't I charge a fee for something so important? And since we've known each other for so long, though, I'll give you a huge returning customer discount. Mm. How about... 500,000? 500,000? But what? Why are you charging a fee before we've even secured any funding? That just doesn't seem right. Besides, by helping us out, you'd be doing a great service to the public. Can't you take your mind off your mora even for just one second and focus on something far more important? Hmm. <laughs> Very well. Since you're so passionate about oh. this project, I'll help you out and waive the introduction. Hey, we convinced Dory. Partners came by earlier today to discuss some things with me, and they still haven't left yet. I'll arrange a meeting for you, and just so we're clear, it'll be up to you to present your project and discuss any deals. Thank you. Thank you so much. If we can wait here, I'll bring them over to you. I feel like Kave could be happier about the situation. I see everything. They are Dory's associates. So. What do these people want? But we are Dory's associates. Hey. <laughs> I should have paid more attention during the negotiations just now. I Where did I put the delivery so shit? Dory gave us a brief introduction about the two of you. You are Kave, the renowned architect, and you are the traveler. Practically all of Tavat has heard of you by now. Your pleasure. <laughs> I don't feel like there's an obvious business opportunity here, but since Dory took the time to introduce you, we can spend some time to have a conversation. So, let's hear your idea. All right, here's the situation. I've been commissioned to build a library in the desert, with the intended goal of allowing the desert dwellers to have more access to reading materials. So, it's a public welfare project? Yes. Correct. Hmm, then the commission fees will likely be very low. You should be careful. I'm not too concerned about how much I'll get for the commission fees, actually. I'm fine with doing it for free. I just want to get this project rolling as soon as possible. We're just a little short on funding. So what? You can't possibly expect that we just cover the shortfall for you. Besides, what does a library in the desert have to do with us? If you want to build it, build it yourself with your own Mora. Seems I don't have Mora. To me. I don't have Mora. Hey, there's no need to be so harsh. They are Dory's associates, after all. Here, can you tell us a bit more about what we can gain from sponsoring this project? Huh. You can get the naming rights to the library, and you can get Campus Clyde to advertise your businesses in the desert. No, genuinely, which one would be better? <laughs> it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Which one would be better? Uh, you can get the naming naming rights. Hmm. So we'd mostly be doing it for reputation and exposure. Mm -hmm. There is some value to that. It could make doing business in the desert a bit easier. Well, just speaking for myself, I've got nothing in the desert. 
I also have a concern. Uh, it feels like there's not much to profit from in the short term. But in the long term, the reputation gain also doesn't sound like it'd offset the cost of the sponsorship. Then how about this? What if, instead of building a single library, we commit to an entire complex Ooh. of buildings dedicated to culture and education? Wouldn't that just cost more? It would, yes. but think about it. But in that case... <laughs> Mr. Kave, please tell us what Ooh, she has a bit of a thing for Kave, clearly. I'll just give an example. If we were to build a library and a school near Aru village, then the desert dwellers would gradually begin to migrate towards the area. A whole suite of buildings will be able to host more traffic and thus drive the economic development of the entire area. In turn, that would lead to direct business opportunities. Mm -hmm. I've been to the desert several times. Although there are still many lingering tensions between the two regions, the amount of interaction has been steadily increasing, and in the long term, the desert will only become more and more important to Sumeru. Hmm. You do have a point. Education in the desert is indeed an industry that has not been tapped into. If we can be the first to place stakes in the area... Exactly, think about it. You just believe anything he tells you? But Even the dude, think about it. Know that urban planning will affect population flow. If you don't believe me, you can ask anyone on the street to confirm it to you. And think about it. If you start building the population flow, like Kave just said, you have uh, the pretty much the base advertisement rights of just from just the area existing. Uh, buildings are named w uh, with your names. Uh, area is built with you with the knowledge of you being the ones that sponsor it desert dwellers will be much more trusting towards you just and simply because you help them develop more you help them in a way that other people ignore them in. so you immediately are gaining trust of the desert dwellers in both merchants and new oncoming people as well as people that are already there you're just gaining much more not only advertisement not only uh, not only a general opinion of people you're gaining trust of the people in that area you're building to develop people that are immediately there will be the first people to start developing bigger in there and if they have your if you have their trust you're settled for better business Wait, something just occurred to me. If we're going to build a library in the desert, yeah. Aru Village would obviously be the best place for it. But it seems we're not the only ones with our eyes on the village. I heard a rumor a while back saying a lot of land and buildings in Aru Village have already been secretly purchased by a big name merchant. What? What? In other words, if we try to join the fray now, there won't be much left for us. If we want to build a suite of buildings focused on education and culture, Aru Village is the prime location. If we want to build it anywhere else, we'll have to deal with a far larger list of problems. It's not impossible, I suppose, but... Then there's no hurry. We can wait for Aru Village to develop more first and get into the market for expansion to other areas. Uh, but if you were to do that... Is there nothing else to discuss? Great timing! I've pretty much heard all I want to hear. If there are no other urgent matters, I'll be on my way. I'll be off as well. If you have any new ideas, please feel free to reach out. We need to check who the fuck is building in the... interested in funding this, so no point in me doing this on my own. Let's revisit this another time. God damn it. Hey, guys, wait! Well, what can I say? I guess it went somewhat as expected. They are Dory's friends, after all. As soon as they heard that there's not much more in this for them, they lost all interest. Yeah. Yeah, it's just another day doing business with people. But I can never get used to that. Those people never think of anyone other than themselves. Looks like we'll have to figure out some other way to get the funding. Hmm. Let's go. No, we we can make it out. I have a feeling. 
I have a feeling that the merchant who bought shit. I feel like we know already the person that bought all this land. Yeah. Don't tell me that you're here to mock us. <laughs> what kind of person do you take me for? Would the kind and generous Lord Sakama Bay really do such a thing? Yes. I will say though, I more or less expected this outcome even before I introduced them to you. Oh come on! You try to talk up the project all you want, but the facts will remain the same. This project is high investment with slow return. I would. Any person would put their money into this. I would. This isn't just a business project, right? Also, if you already knew no one would want to partner with us, why did you still try to charge me 500,000 mora? You scammer! <clears throat> you might want to remember who your creditor is before you start talking like that, Kabe. <laughs> True. I'll pay back every last coin that I still owe you, but that's a completely different matter. Alright, since you're so devastated about this, I'll set you up for dinner with another big name merchant. A dinner? In fact, I'll be inviting the most famous merchant in all of Sumeru. So I'll be counting on your performance. What the fuck? What? Really? I... Uh, I would like to sincerely apologize for my attitude just now. So, where would we be meeting this merchant? Follow me. Oh, I, I suppose both of you can come. Both both of us can come, eh? Well, let's go. Oh. Oh. Is it her? Is it just her? I have a feeling it's just her. You said you're going to introduce us to the most famous merchant in Sumeru. Well, where are they? You still don't get it. Oh my god. The most famous merchant in Sumeru? Yep. Is Lord Sanganame Bay. So you met yourself all along? Then why did you bring us here? Well, I give it some thought, and the complex of education and culture building that you mentioned does hold some promise. Hey! It'll be a pretty big more estate. And I'll have to fund it all on my own, but that's not really a problem for me. Hey! Dory, you do have a heart! Dory has a heart! From so suddenly. Are you trying to scam me again? The reasons are not important. What's important is that I'm willing to help you. True. However, you know just as well as me that once this project actually breaks ground, it'll start sucking more from my pockets like crazy. So, to cut costs? I'm worried. I'm worried. I get it. I get it. I won't charge any commission fees, and I'll take responsibility for the entire project. Splendid. Then let's sign the contract right away. <laughs> God, she got him good. <sighs> this way, the children of the desert will have some books to read. Their lives should improve a bit after this. Hell yeah, man. You seem rather pleased. Of course. There He's such are a good guy. Better than using my knowledge to help other people change their fates. I must thank you as well, Dory. I used to say you only cared about Mora, which might have been some prejudice on my part. So no, it was true. I will also try to pay back my debts as soon as possible. Now, let's have a quick discussion. Where would you want the library to be built? That will be the most important building. No, oh, on the land she purchased. I'll provide you with a copy of the deed when we get back. She already has the land. The address on the document to find the lot. Huh? The deed? Yeah, she bought the... She bought the grounds, didn't she? So hold on a sec. The person who has been buying up everything around Aru Village was you all along? Ah, uh, she played him into doing this for free. Yep. Ah, damn it. From my perspective, this has been a great turn of events. 
I didn't put much in and easily got a lot in return. But what about my commission fees? Huh? Didn't you waive those yourself? I was just gonna say that to Kakar. We mustn't procrastinate. You should start construction. God damn it. But before I could finish my sentence, you volunteered to waive your commission fees and even promised to take responsibility for the whole project from start to finish. <laughs> God damn it. That you used every trick in the book to deceive me. You deliberately paused for a long time while talking about the project and kept glancing at me with that menacing look in your eyes. She is evil. <laughs> She's so fucking evil. There's no point in dwelling on the details. You know what? I'll pay for tonight's dinner. You're pay I I hope so. Fine. I'll drop the argument on the commission fees. But since you said you're paying for dinner, I'm going to order the best dishes and booze this place has to offer, and lots of it. Tonight, we're feasting until I've recouped my full commission fees. <laughs> Hell yeah, high five. Oh yeah, that's here, right? Let's see. Quests. Story mode. Endings. Ayo. Now, I have a feeling... I have a feeling that if I... That, that, that if I start now, this one, it'll take me another hour. And I don't want this to be a two and a half hours video. So I'll stop that here. And finish more of it maybe tomorrow. But damn, Kav is such a good guy. Okay. See you on the rest of that tomorrow.